Welcome to Combative Wing Chun. I'm Sifu David. Today we're going to talk about Wing Chun versus Ji Kune Do or Ji Kune Do versus Wing Chun. Which one is better? Which one is better for you? What is the difference? We're going to get into that in this video. So stay tuned. There's a lot of information. We're going to dive right in. Let's talk about the stance of Ji Kune Do. Ji Kune Do stance is with your right foot forward, left foot in the back, almost in the line. Your left foot is out slightly and with your heel up. You can see that your heel is up like this. So that you're using the ball of your foot to launch forward, just like a track runner. Your body is slightly 45 degrees this way. Your front fist is in a low position with the elbow down, pointing at the opponent's target. So this is always a threat to your opponent. The backhand is here to protect any other attacks that are coming in. So that's the Jeet Kune Do stance. Here's the Wing Chun stance. The traditional stance is called a Yi Zi Kim Yuan Ma, which is translated, which means the letter two, the letter two is like this in Chinese, right? So the letter two, Kim Yuan, which means squeezing on the sheep <laughs> or the goat, and Ma means stance. So what they're basically saying is, imagine you have your legs squeezing a sheep between your knees. So the point of it is to keep the pressure inside of your legs here. The hands are in the Bai Zhong position. Bai Zhong which means positioning it um, against the dummy. So they're all on the center line and I'm facing my attacker square on. So we're gonna talk about what's the disadvantages and advantages of this stance. Now there's another Wing Chun stance, which is called the, the front leading one, which is similar, but now I just have one foot in the front, it could be the left foot, or it could be the right foot. Notice that I switch stance, okay? So if I switch to the front foot lead, now my right foot, right hand is in the front, okay? So this is also similar to the crane stance. Reason is because crane is the forefather of Wing Chun. So either it's going to be right foot in front or left foot in front. But this is still protecting center line and then I'm basically still square towards my opponent. I'm not turned sideways like this. So those are the two stances. I showed you the Ji Kune Do, Bruce Lee's Ji Kune Do stance and I show you the classical Wing Chun stance. Now, what is a stance? The stance outlines the strategy of the whole martial art. So let's take a look at Ji Kune Do. Why is Bruce Lee stand like this? What is the strategy? Okay. Actually, Ji Kune Do is backwards from Wing Chun and backwards from a lot of traditional martial arts. Ji Kune Do, if you translate it into Chinese, means Ji Kune Do, which means the way of the intercepting fist. Bruce Lee's strategy was to be able to intercept the fist and to beat the guy to the punch. He can do it because he's fast and he's quick and he's probably one of the fastest attackers and the fastest martial artists that ever lived. So he can pull it off because he's so fast. So can you train yourself to be as fast as him or even partially as fast? If you can, that, if you can do that, then Jeet Kune Do might be a good strategy for you. So in Jeet Kune Do, let's get Will in here for a second. In Jeet Kune Do, I want to be able to beat him to the punch, okay? Now, if I have my hand out here, it's already halfway to the target, okay? And then when my foot is caught here, I'm getting ready to launch an attack. So I want to be able to attack him before he attacks me, okay? Because in a street fight situation, people are not going to get in the guard and dance around and wait for somebody to launch an attack. They're going to have their hands down most of the time and then just come up and, and hit. So in a street fight situation, the reason that Ji Kune Do is very good is because when he attacks, I want to hit him before he can even get his attack off. Okay? Thus the term Ji Kune Do, intercepting fist. I am intercepting his fist, he's attacking and I'm already there. Okay, so what it does, it, needs, it takes lots of training to be able to read his body movements. 
and also read movements that are not happening even before it's attacked. Because before somebody attacks, what does he have to do? Usually, they'll take a breath, right? And before they take a breath, before they attack, what do they need to do? They need to target you, right? And before they target you, what do they need to do? Their mind needs to be aware that they want to target you, okay? So in Chinese, we have the saying, before the body moves, the qi moves. Before the qi moves, the mind moves, okay? So if you can predict and you can read the person's intention, and you can also read his breath, which is the qi, then the body is easy to read because it's slower than everything else. So in Jikun Do, you want to be able to train yourself so that if you, you can attack any time you want. Okay, attack any time you want. Okay. It looks like I'm just hitting him, but just attack any time you want. So as, long, as soon as I feel, as soon as I feel that he's about to attack, as soon as I see, which is even slower, that he's about to attack, I actually have a lot of time to react to his attack. And because I'm in this guard, I'm already halfway there. Right? I'm not starting from here. This is a longer distance. I'm already halfway there. Okay, let's closer. I'm already halfway there. You step from here, I'm already there. So it becomes a faster and more effective way to intercept and to use your speed and use your power to overcome the attacker. So we're talking about the strategy of Jeet Kune Do, which is to be faster than your opponent, cut him off with your, with your fist, and uh, be able to launch fast and to intercept his attacks. That is the strategy of Jeet Kune Do. And it worked very well for Bruce Lee because he is so fast and he's so tele uh, non-telegraphic that you can't tell he's going to attack. And he's able to read his opponents so well that he can close in before, he, before the person can even think about attacking. Okay, so now let's talk about Wing Chun. What are the advantages and what are the strategies of Wing Chun? Well, actually, it's backwards from Jikun Do because in Wing Chun, you stand like this. This is not the position you want to be in in order to launch forward because it's not the fastest way to launch forward. Wing Chun is designed to actually pivot. That's why in Shamkyo, we do so much pivot because Wing Chun was designed to be fought on boats. Okay. So if you're asking which way martial art is better, well, let's take a look at the martial art. Why was it invented? Why was it developed in the first place? Who used it when they developed it? What were they doing when they were using it? Well, Wing Chun was invented on boats and then perfected by the uh, opera, the boat operas back then, back in China. Okay? So what are boats? Uh, they're not stable, right? And there's lots of stuff lying around the, on the ground. You don't want to be moving around too much on the boat. You don't have that much space. So they design a stance like this, a chain stance, to be able to operate and be able to counter people in a very small space. Now in northern China, they will have a longer stance, okay, like this, because they use it for more kicks and they use it for jumping. They're able to jump off like rocks and things because they're not using it on a boat. They have more room to use their technique. So you have to look at the martial art. What was it used for, right? So Wing Chun, if you talk about classically, this is the stance. So it's opposite of intercepting his fist. What Wing Chun does, the strategy is to, is to block and attack at the same time. Okay? So if he's attacking, I'm blocking and attacking at the same time. Or if it's straight, right? I want to block and attack at the same time. Okay? Which is pretty fast. Pretty fast compared to other martial arts because other martial arts will be to you attack from the flop and then punch, right? Or would they to be the flop and then punch, right? So most martial arts will be two beats. In uh, Wing Chun, we condense that into one beat, right? One beat, right? One beat, block and attack at the same time. So that's where Wing Chun is very useful because it's that much faster. Now, that is the strategy of Wing Chun, is to be able to do those things simultaneously. Now, let's contrast that with Jikun Do. Jikun Do, let's say it attacks. I don't even need to block because I'm attacking and cutting them off. Okay? So those are two strategies. And you decide what's better for you. Are you fast enough to use Jikun Do? Are you fast enough to read your, uh, your opponent's attacks that you can use and cut in that fast? Now, if you're not that fast, maybe Wing Chun strategy might be better for you because 
it comes in here, you can see it coming, then you have block and tag at the same time. Is basically the second best thing you can do. Okay, so those are the two different strategies of Wing Chun versus Jeet Kune Do. So I get this question a lot. People ask me, Sue Dave, but what is your style? What, what kind of style you have? Well, it's something like a combination of different things because I trained in Jeet Kune Do and I trained in Wing Chun. And I've taken the best stuff from both worlds and then made it into my own system called Combative Wing Chun and also Accelerated Wing Chun. Okay, so what I did is basically combine the two things. I'm gonna combine the attack and defense at the same time from Wing Chun and also the ability to close in on the opponent and to intercept this attack, okay? So that's why if you attack, then I go into Wing Chun at this point because I'm closer. So I start with Jeet Kune Do, right? I start with Jeet Kune Do and then I end up with Wing Chun, <coughs> okay? So those are, so, I, so I'm able to blend both Jeet Kune Do and Wing Chun. So which one's better for you? Well, you decide. What do you like? What are your physical abilities? What can you train? And uh, what suits your style? So if you have any questions, make sure you comment down in the comment section. You probably have a lot. Uh, if you have some other tips that you wanna give some other people on this channel, then go ahead and put it in the comment section. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon in the next lesson. <laughs>